You're in Sweden, it's 1989, and killer robots have decided to invade. <laughs> Welcome to Generation Zero. This is a game made by Avalanche. They're the developers known for their work on the Just Cause series. And to me, this game feels like a passion project. It's got massive scale to it. It looks incredible, but you get the sense that you're playing this game that wasn't concocted by some high-level meeting by executives who want to try and make the most of the market, selling millions of copies. This feels like a game that would be made by a team that wanted to make it, as opposed to a team that have been tasked to make it. Generation Zero is an open-world exploration survival game that you can play solo or you can play with your friends as a co-op multiplayer experience. And your main goal is simply to find out what the hell is happening out here in the Swedish countryside. Why have these killer robots decided to descend onto the planet and just started to terrorise the locals? You play as a teenager and you've come back from holiday and you just find, well, this. It's just chaos happening and there are robots everywhere. You basically have to survive the robots attacking you and try and figure out what caused them to come here. There's no particular mission path that you have to follow really, it's just a game that you can work through at your own pace and considering just how incredible the world is that you're walking around in, you might want to spend some time just exploring. The game's built on Avalanche's Apex engine and it does look absolutely beautiful and the audio design is something that you notice particularly as well. You get the wind sort of rushing through your ears as you're walking along and you can hear the sound of your footsteps really clearly on, on different types of ground. And You even get like a heartbeat that picks up after you've been running for a while, that becomes louder and louder in your ears. It's something that will really help you understand the state of your character quite quickly and it feels like because it's quite lonely out here that you really are all alone unless you're playing co-op and then you've got people running around with you but I chose to play a lot of this solo and it felt like a really lonely experience I was definitely like out in the wilderness on my own and it was like me versus the entire army of killer robots there's a day-night cycle in the game and a dynamic weather system as well which is really nice it changes up how you might want to explore different locations and there's not much in the way of direction when it comes to the in-game UI either. It's this really, really raw experience. And like I said, it just adds to the loneliness. It's kind of just you, your gun, and, and the killer robots. As I said, there's no one way to complete the story and get to the end of the game. So you sort of just do things at your own pace. And it is oddly refreshing for the first part. There are different distinct locations within the world. You've got like wooded areas, coastlines, farms, and villages. And there's even a military base that you can explore and having spent a little bit of time in Sweden myself and having driven through the countryside it does strike quite a similar feeling it's quiet it's large and at times it's quite lonely the quiet is broken up by the killer robots though they are there to refocus you on something and they just sort of let you know that you're about to head in to what could be an important location now, because I chose to play Generation Zero solo on my own, I did end up working into that stealth experience quite a lot because some of the killer robots, they will trigger on you quite quickly. If there's a, a direct line of sight between you and the robot and they notice you, they're going to turn around and they're going to start attacking you very, very quickly. And then they'll alert the other killer robots in the area and they'll all come running at you and it's very difficult to survive. Now there are several different types of robots that you'll need to face off against, from smaller ones that are much easier to kill to the larger, more armoured ones. Those are the ones where the stealth roll will help you, because really, you need more than one player to combat them properly and to take them down in an acceptable time frame. If you trigger one of the bigger robots and you're not equipped to take them down, or you try and distract them, you're probably just going to die if you play solo, unless you're really quick with your reactions. But playing solo doesn't mean that it's a bad experience, it's just really, really tense. You're like creeping around and using bushes for cover, trees to break lines of sight, and you wait for the robots to pass on and then you can move on past them. I mentioned that you can distract them as well. You've got things like boom boxes that you can throw and flares and fireworks. They'll take the gaze of the robots away momentarily, but they might just spot you again as you start moving. You need to make sure you're keeping yourself hidden away because they can turn back on you very, very quickly. But playing solo, it's definitely a stealth experience. 
and looting is obviously a really big part of this game as well. Just pick a direction, any direction, and start taking yourself across the map, and you'll come across plenty of different areas that you can scout through. You'll be picking up lots of different gadgets that you can use to distract the robots, different weapons you can use to attack them, and the ammo you need. But when you find these new locations, they will probably be guarded by the robots. So you've got to start somewhere. So as soon as you start playing the game, make sure you're picking up the ammunition you need for the weapons you've got, so you've always got something on hand. The world is just so vast that you can do this just exploring for hours before you start doing anything meaningful towards the story, and that truly embraces the meaning of an open world game. But what I will say is that once you start exploring for longer periods of time, you're going to notice that a lot of the assets within the world, they are quite heavily reused. New villages that you'll find will be filled with the same few housing structures, and that's a little bit disappointing to see, especially when you think you've found somewhere new to go and explore, but it doesn't really feel very new once you've gone through the first few villages. I get that the world is absolutely huge and making individual assets for each location would be extremely costly in terms of development time, but a few more of those models to flesh out the offering wouldn't go amiss. Overall, Generation Zero is just one of those games where you can sink as much or as little time into it as you really want to. The world doesn't push you along at all and it's down to you whether you want to take the hints that are given to you and act on them to try and progress the story or or not. So, so if all you want to do is roam and loot for weapons and shoot up some robots, then absolutely, you can go ahead and do that. And with the world that's been created being so visually stunning and so large and dynamic, it will keep you entertained for a while, that's for sure, but after that while's finished, I think you will be looking for something more to do. But there you are, that's my first look at Generation Zero. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop it a like down below, and maybe leave me some comments if you've played it yourself, and let me know how your experience was. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.